My name is Stevie. I'm 24, I'm a commercial pilot, flight instructor, and I fly a 1952 C-35 Bonanza. There are a lot of different quirks about this airplane, mostly due to its age and just the time in which it was designed. It was kind of, you know, the first of its kind. I'm sure it looked like a spaceship back in 1952, but nothing is really ergonomically placed in the airplane. You know, the throttle and the mixture are all in weird places. And it's definitely a left seat pilot airplane. So there's only brakes on the left. The wobble pump that you use to start the engine, it's literally like a lawnmower. It's on the left side only. Um, and the radios were on the left originally. So that's how I kept them when I did the panel upgrade. But it's, it's very different from what you'll find today where you have the six pack and the radios on the right. There were definitely some things about the panel that you know could have been a safety issue if you weren't paying close attention. For example, there was only one fuel gauge and you had to toggle between which of the three tanks you were viewing at a given time. So can you manage that? Yes, but would I you know, prefer to have that? No, I'd prefer to be able to view all three at a given time. I wanted to make it a you know, very capable airplane with IFR capability. I wanted to get more information from my engine, but I didn't want to put giant screens in the plane and take away its character, right? It's a 1952 airplane. It's truly like a classic airplane, just kind of like a classic car. So I treated my airplane the same way. I wanted to preserve you know, the round gauge look. I wanted to preserve the radios on the left, keep the piano keys and keep all the little vintage decals you'll see in the airplane. So with the GI 275s, it made it really easy to keep the round dial look. I was able to fit everything in the radio stack on the left, which I wasn't sure if that was gonna happen, but it all fits perfectly. And even the autopilot is in the same place that the old engine instrument cluster was. So it almost looks the same in that way too. The panel upgrade has definitely improved my you know, ability to deal with all the quirks of an old Bonanza. For example, the fuel system, I'm able to view all three tanks at once instead of having to toggle those piano keys to see which fuel tank I'm viewing. And another thing it helps with is the Bonanza boogie or that yaw that you'll get back and forth when you hit turbulence. The autopilot has a yaw damper, which you can turn on even when you're not really using the autopilot that mitigates that swaying back and forth. I flew my airplane all the way from California to Oshkosh right after I got the panel upgrade and having the autopilot was an absolute game changer. It was amazing to have and it made managing the workload so much easier. So one of the things I'm really looking forward to doing with the new panel is getting IFR current again. This plane was technically IFR certified, but definitely not practically IFR capable before the upgrade. So my instrument currency, well, fell out of currency and I need to go get an IPC and really do an instrument refresher course. And I know that that will just be a breeze in this airplane. If you are thinking about upgrading to a Garmin panel, but want to preserve the vintage feel of your airplane, I mean, I hope that my airplane serves as a good example that you absolutely can keep that vintage feel. There's so many options out there to, you know, keep those round dials and just so many smaller size navigators if you're looking for something to fit in a certain spot. It's completely possible. And honestly, I think my panel looks even better than it did when it was purely vintage.